What's up, everyone? Welcome back for more stats. Today, we're going to start looking at chapter, what is this, chapter 8? And we're going to be looking at the confidence interval for, well, just a confidence interval and what that really means. And this is really a, one of the major parts of stats. So if you can get this now, I think you're going to be doing great in the future. So let's get started. Today we're going to be making a best guess about the mean of a midterm exam by creating a confidence interval. And right away we're starting with the definition of a confidence interval being a point estimate plus or minus a margin of error. The group that creates a confidence interval with the smallest margin of error that still captures the true mean will win a prize. Well, I can't really give you a prize this time because we're doing this all virtually, but you will have my deep respect. So for the first part here, I'm supposed to give you a random sample of five scores, and we're going to record those five scores and figure out the mean. Luckily for us, I've got the um, semester one final scores for a class a few years ago, and you can see here are all of the we had 70 students in AP Stats that year, and we have all of their scores. I've gone ahead and also um, taken away the population mean and standard deviation so we can't see that. And what we're going to do is we're going to mix up the deck by randomizing the range. And the first five scores here are going to be the ones we use, 62, 72, 64, 68, and 86. You'll notice over here we got a mean of 70 and a standard deviation from the sample of 9.53. Putting those numbers into our worksheet, we can now do the rest of this. So let's identify the population parameter, sample, and statistic. Starting with the population, we got that the population, the population that we sampled from, was the list of all of the fall semester final scores from one of the years in the past. If you remember what the parameter was, parameter is the population either mean or the population proportion of something. Since we're doing means, uh, the parameter value should be mu. The sample were those five random scores that we got, 62, 72, 64, 86, and 76. And that makes the statistic the average of those five scores, x bar equals 70. Remember, we use x bar for stati the statistic of a mean and mu for the parameter of the mean. Now we're going to change from our uh, going to change our point estimate into an interval by adding and subtracting the same number from the point estimate. If it's not clear, the point estimate is the mean of the sample, which was 70. Uh, the number that we add and subtract from that point estimate is called the margin of error. So what, are the mar what margin of error will you choose? Now none of these are right or wrong, but they all give us a margin of error which is, you know, bigger or smaller. Um, so one of the ones that I've seen, margin of error one, is the maximum of the sample minus the minimum of the sample. Of the sample. Some students think that this gives us a good margin of error, and it does give us a margin of error, which is, you know, not bad. It's going to be the minimum minus the maximum, so that's, uh, in our case, for our sample, that was 24. I've also seen some students use a margin of error of that same calculation, maximum minus minimum, but half of that, because 24 seems like a really big number. So max minus min divided by 2, that's 12. Still other students have tried using the standard deviation, which was 9.53. And I think that, you know, some students think that standard deviation, that sounds like a really smart thing to use. So let's just use our standard deviation. I mean, after all, why would we learn it? Why would we learn it if we're not going to use it, right? Okay, next we're going to write our interval. 
that you think contains a true midterm exam score. So if we remember correctly, that's going to be the point estimate plus or minus the margin of error. The first interval was had, well, no, they're all going to have the point estimate is 70. So the first interval is going to be 70 plus or minus the margin of error 24. That gives a interval of 66 to 94. Now think about that interval. If the mean, the true mean average score is anywhere between 66 and 94, then this interval has successfully captured the mean. It's a pretty big interval, so you should feel pretty confident that that interval from 66 to 94 is going to capture the value of the mean. After all, there's a lot of plausible values there that the mean could be. And actually, I messed up on the math here because that lower limit should have been 46. So 46 to 94, man, I got to tell you, almost any you know, any 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 um test score is going to be in that range. So I have to feel really confident that 90 46 to 94 is going to capture the true mean score. Interval 2 is going to be 70 plus or minus 12, which gives us an interval from 58 to 82. Now that's a smaller interval. So in terms of how confident are you going to feel, you should probably feel less confident, but still pretty confident. Uh, definitely not as confident as 46 to 94, but still pretty confident. I mean, maybe the mean, if the mean is 80, we're good. But if the mean is 86, not so good. Now, interval three is going to be the average of the five scores, 70 plus or minus a standard deviation of 9.53. That gives us a smaller interval than interval 2. Uh, so 60.47 to 79.53. So if we felt confident but not as confident with interval 2, interval 3 should be less confident than interval 2 because we have less plausible values for the true mean. How confident are we that the interval captures the true mean? Answer with a percentage. Again, there's no real right or wrong answer for any of these. For any of these. Interval 1, I'm saying that I'm about 99% confident that I got the true mean for that one. Because, as I said previously, the interval from 46 to 94 is pretty much every possible value or every possible score that I would have ever given on a final test. Okay, maybe I did lower than 46 for someone's test before. And I've definitely done higher than 94. But that range between 46 and 94, that's almost every possible test, almost every possible test score. So that's a really high confidence level, 99%. Interval 2, I'm less confident about because I have a smaller interval. There are less plausible values here. So that interval from 58 to 82, that feels like, you know, maybe we got it, maybe not. I'm not 100 percent. I don't I'm not as confident there. Uh, so I'm going to decrease that confidence level. Again, there's no right or wrong answer for what you decrease that to. Just get some kind of a feeling about what this means. So maybe 85% confident that the true mean midterm score was 82. This means that interval 3 has to be even smaller than 85%. So I'm going to say 80% because it's just a little bit smaller than interval 2. So what do we notice as the pattern here? Uh, we notice the pattern that if we feel more confident, that means we have a bigger interval, a wider interval, if you will. And if we feel less confident, that means we have a smaller interval. A smaller interval means that we're more able to pinpoint the um, value of the mean, but at the cost of being less confident about it. A large interval means that you know, we're very confident about 
capturing the mean in that very large interval, but we lose a lot of specificity. Like I said, 46 to 94, you know, that's pretty much every test score. I could be 100% confident that the actual mean is somewhere between a 0% and a 100%. But does that mean anything? Does 100% confidence actually me have anything meaningful to say? And the answer is no. 100% confident is not a meaningful thing. So kind of think about that where a confidence level that you know the higher the percentage doesn't mean that the interval is better it just means that there are more admissible more plausible values to choose from number six says that one of the groups got 71 to 79 as their interval what was their point estimate well the point estimate should have been right in the middle of 71 and 79 and one way to find that right in the middle, that's going to be the average of those two numbers. And so the point estimate is half of 71 plus 79, which is 75. Now as for that margin of error, the margin of error would be the difference of those two, 71 minus 79, that represents two margins of error. So we'll divide that by two. So our formula for margin of error based on the endpoints of the interval, it's going to be half of the interval width, or 0 0.5, multiplied by 79 minus 71, which is 4. So, Mr. Ferreria claims that the true mean exam score is 84. Does your interval support or deny this claim? And actually, the word that I want to use, is, instead of deny, I want to say refute, because we can either support a claim or refute the claim. Let's take a look at that first interval. In that first interval, 84 is right in between 46 and 94. This means that 84 is a plausible value for the mean based on the interval that we calculated. Let's take a look at interval two by comparison. This time we notice that 84 is greater than any of the other values in the interval. In other words, 84 is not in the interval. Therefore, 84 is not a plausible value for the mean based on this one interval. So this interval refutes the claim. And then interval number three is much like interval two. 84 is not inside the interval, meaning 84 is not between 60.47 uh, and 79.53. So 84 is not in, in the interval, so this interval refutes the claim that 84 is the true mean. So shorthand here, um, if the claim is in the interval, then the interval supports the claim. And if the claim is not inside the interval, then the interval refutes the claim or does not support the claim. This brings us to the important ideas for today's lesson. Firstly, we had the idea of the point estimate. And the point estimate was a statistic that gives a reasonable guess about the population parameter. If the parameter was a proportion, then the point estimate is going to be the same thing as the statistic for proportion, which is p hat. That would be the p hat from the sample. And if the parameter being measured is the mean of the population, then the point estimate would be the statistic for a mean, which is x bar. Nextly, nextly, <laughs> we uh, looked at a confidence interval. Although I don't know how many times we said the word confidence interval, we were looking at confidence intervals today. All confidence intervals are constructed the same way. They are a point estimate plus or minus a margin of error. To put some numbers behind that, we could say that the parameter has to be between the point estimate minus a margin of error and a point estimate plus a margin of error. 
Uh, those two values, point estimate minus margin of error, we're going to call that A for now. And point estimate plus margin of error, we'll call that B for right now. So if you need to go backwards from an interval to the uh, point estimate, you can just do the average of A and B, and that will give you the point estimate. Likewise, if you need to go from the confidence interval to the margin of error, you can just take half of B minus A, and that will give you the margin of error. There is a sentence frame for the interpretation of a confidence level. That sentence frame reads, we are confident level percent confident that the interval from the point, the est point estimate minus a margin of error to the point estimate plus a margin of error captures a true, whatever the parameter is, of whatever the context for the parameter is. Like all of the sentence frames, you're going to go ahead and adjust that for readability. And finally, the confidence interval gives the plausible values f of a parameter. We haven't discussed how, you know, all of the nuts and bolts for constructing that confidence interval. That's going to come later. But if you hold on to the fact that that confidence interval gives you a list of possible plausible values for the parameter, you're going to really have a, a, a deep understanding of what that confidence interval really means. So let's take a look at Check Your Understanding. The Pew Research Center and the Smithsonian Magazine recently quizzed a random sample of 1,006 U.S. adults on their knowledge of science. One of the questions asked, which gas makes up most of the Earth's atmosphere, hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon, or oxygen? I hope you get that question right. Uh, a 95 confidence interval for the proportion who correctly answered nitrogen is between 17.5% and 22.5%. Woo, that's pretty low. Question one, interpret the confidence interval. And for this one, all we really need is a sentence frame. Once you have that sentence frame, just substitute all the values. So if we make many, many 95% confidence intervals, we expect 95% to capture the true proportion of US adults who would correctly answer nitrogen. Next, we're going to calculate the point estimate and margin of error. The point estimate is 1 half of 0 0.175 plus 0 0.225, and that gives us 0 0.2. And the margin of error is half of 0 0.225 minus 0 0.175, which is 0 0.025. Now I want you to notice here that the point estimate 0 0.2 is right in the middle of the interval from 0 0.175 and 0 0.225. And our last question, if people guess one of four choices at random, about 25% should get the answer correct. One out of four, 25%. Does the interval provide convincing evidence that less than 25% of US adults would answer this question correctly? Explain your reasoning. So I want you to start off by noticing that 0 0.25 is not in the confidence interval. In fact, all the values in the confidence interval are less than 0 0.25. So all plausible values are less than 0 0.25. And if we just kind of tweak our sentence frame for the meaning of a confidence interval, then we're saying that we're confident that less than 25% of US adults would answer the question correctly because according to our calculations, anywhere between 17.5% and 22.5% would answer the question correctly. Any of those plausible values are less than the claim that 25% would answer the question correctly. 
So that kind of does it for our introduction to confidence intervals. Uh, you know, I can't stress enough that if you really think about that plausible value uh, sentence, then you're going to really understand what these confidence intervals mean. So that's it for us today. Have a great day.